Yeah, let's transition to cricket now on the Sportsmag Zone. After a nail-biting finish to the West Indies Championship, Guyana Harpy Eagles are celebrating a successful defence of the crown. The Harpy Eagles comprehensively won their final round match against the combined campuses and colleges by eight wickets on Friday, leaving them to sit back and watch the outcomes of the remaining fixtures in the round. However, a draw between then leaders Winnard Island's Volcanoes and fourth placed Leeward Island's Hurricanes, along with a shocking defeat for Barbados Pride at the hands of the West Indies Academy, made way for the Harpy Eagles to lift the Headley Weeks trophy and take home the US $250,000 cash prize. Here are the final standings. The Guyana Harpy Eagles finishing with 103.8 points ahead of the Windward Islands Volcanoes, 98.2 the Leeward Islands Hurricanes, 94 Barbados Pride finishing in fourth, 92.8, just 0.8 points ahead of Trinidad and Tobago, West Indies Academy 71.6, the Jamaica Scorpions 59.4 and the combined campuses and colleges 30.2 points. Congratulations to the Guyana Harpy Eagles went into the final round in fourth position but they found a way to get the job done. They did what they needed to do and now we have Tevin Imlach. He is the captain of the Harpy Eagles team. Um, Tevin, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty fine. Happy in a happy place. Uh, obviously we won so feeling very good. What have the last two days been like? Well, uh, Mixed emotions. Um, going into the final day, obviously we, we are already um, we are already won our game. So, you know, waiting, nail biting, finish, hoping you know that the academy could come through for us. Um, it, was a, it was a mix, mixed emotions. You know, one time you feel like you're there, next time you feel like oh, you know, you might not get it. So, yeah, definitely mixed emotions. Yeah, take me specifically through those emotions because I'm sure you probably, as a team watched a lot of the final day between Barbados Pride and West Indies Academy. West Indies Academy on top at one stage, then it looked as if the Pride had it, um, then the West Indies Academy sneaked it. Just take me through the roller coaster of emotions through Saturday. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, it's a case where, you know, we, we, we were hoping for some rain, to be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we take away some time. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, it was a case of just you know hope. Uh, they, we knew that the academy, you know, they have some good players and they they can pull it off. But you know, we it was a case of Barbados not getting too far ahead because obviously if they would have had a, a massive lead, you know, they could have pushed the game a lot more and, and could have gone a bit hard at them. So. Um, it was a case of, you know, us just, just there hoping every wicket, every run we, we were following and, and every time a wicket, you know, falls for the academy is like, you know, we lose a wicket as a team. So, you know, it was, it, it was definitely a roller coaster, right? But when, we, when, we, when the academy won the game, you know, it was, it was just jubilation. Everybody was just, you know, crazy and happy about you know, everything that went on. Yeah, talk to me about how significant this is for the Guyana Harpy Eagles setup because no strangers to winning um, regional four-day titles. I think you are seven from the last nine now. So this has become a consistent thing. But Tevin Imlak is a relatively new captain with some new players in the setup. So from that standpoint, I suppose it's extremely significant for this bunch of guys. Yeah, definitely. I mean... You know, coming in is a pretty it was a pretty inexperienced um backing lineup, to say the least. Um a lot of the players, you know, they would have had one or two seasons the most and you know, to see, you know, where the team started and where we end up at the end, you know, it showed a lot of character and it showed a, it showed growth. Um on the other side of it, you know, we had experienced bowlers, you know, and there's Sami Pumal, Kevin Sinclair, Buddha Kishmoti, you know, those three guys our attack is basically built around, you know, three West Indies spinners, quality spinners. Um, obviously, you know that, you know, Guyana rely very heavily on our spin. And, um, 
you know, we had also uh, Niall Smith and young Isaiah Thorne that, you know, they show a lot of growth throughout the tournament from game to game, especially young Isaiah Thorne. I think he was, it was special to see him, you know, the growth that he made, the strides that he made, you know, throughout the tournament. Uh, starting his first game, you know, a bit nervous and, and things aren't necessarily going his way. And then, you know, from there, just, just seeing his consistency and his growth throughout, you know, was magnificent to look at. And Niall Smith coming back from injury and leading the attack as a fast bowler. It was just brilliant to see. Yeah, Verissima Pomo taking 29 wickets in the tournament for the Ghana Harpy Eagles, the number nine bowler as far as wicket taking is concerned in the tournament. The only um, Harpy Eagles bowler in the top 10 this season with Niall Smith getting 20 wickets, the next best. And you spoke about an inexperienced batting lineup. Kevin Sinclair led batting for your team, getting over 500 runs. But you were impressive as well, 485 runs for the season and finishing in the top five. Talk about the importance of those two contributions, Kevin Sinclair, but also yourself as leader of this group and taking on that responsibility with the bat. Yeah, I mean, for Kevin, you know, he is somebody I would say you'd go to war with at any time. You know, he's a, he's a class player. He's someone who's given 110% every time he steps out on the field. You know, he's a brilliant cricketer, and it, I was just happy to see him, you know, move from stride to stride. You know, every year he's been consistent for us. He's been doing well. Year go, year come, and it just shows his growth. Um, on my end, you know, it was, it, I was just happy to contribute. Contribute as the, the captain, you know, obviously... You know, being in that role, you need to lead from the front. You need, if you're going to ask players to do stuff, you know, you need to show, show that yourself. So, I'm happy to, you know, just be a part of the runs and, and, and add value to the team. Yeah, and just to follow up on the question about captaincy, Tevin, does being the captain of the Ghana Happy Eagles ever come with a lot of pressure? Or has your team made the job a bit easier for you? Because many a times on this show, we talk about when players are handed captaincy, you know, it can be a blessing or sometimes it can be a curse because it, of course, affects the players' own performances. What, would, what was it like for you? Yeah, um, it was challenging, to be honest, um, because playing with, playing with the players, like playing with them and not having a leadership role is much different from being in that position. Yeah. Because... Obviously, you know, you you have friends and, and at times you'd have to make some tough decisions where you might have to take them off or, you know, you might need to drop someone for some reason or the other. So, and, you know, players are always, they always want to do well and they always want, you know, the ball in the hand, they always want to make a difference. That's a beautiful guy in the cricket and the players that we have. Um, but, and that makes it a bit challenging, you know, having to manage that and, and um, you know, deal with that aspect. But, you know, it's been brilliant still. Um, we have a, what I call it, think tank, you know. We have the support staff, the coaches, you know, a lot of senior players, like Greer Sami, for example, Rudy Kishmoki. You know, these guys that you can lean on, you know, to ask for advice because as, as a captain, you can't see everything. And especially as a young captain, you might not, you know, be able to see everything. So it's, it's very easy. It, it makes it a lot easier when you can lean on these other players for advice and and stuff like that, it makes the job a lot more easier. So it, I had a lot of support from the, the backroom staff and, you know, a lot of the players. But it, it was challenging, it was different. Obviously, this time around, I, um, I didn't have the, um, the opportunity to keep. So, you know, that's going to be a different <laughs> challenge having to keep and, and captain as well. So the, I'm looking forward to it, but um, time will tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exciting stuff. And you know, you touched on the coach, you touched on the backroom staff. And it's always good when a captain gets the support from those, of course, behind the scenes. I've noticed something, though, when it comes to Guyana and sports. And it's something that has been on my mind. And every time I interview a Guyanese, I'm going to ask them because we have seen a massive development in sport in Guyana on the whole. It's not, not only in cricket. I've seen the women cricketers as well do very well, the Guyanese female cricketers. I've spoken to players, of course, footballers, just different aspects of sport. What do you think, Tevin, is the reason for this sudden rise in Guyanese sport? Yeah, I mean, um, in Guyana, it's, we're a big love of sport, yeah. to be honest. And have the support of the government of Ghana, they're always willing to help. Like 
for example, going into the season, they assisted, the president assisted on the team with, with gears um, to start the tournament, which was, was excellent. It's the first time, you know, something that, like that has ever happened. And, um, you know, it was brilliant to see. It's just, it, it's just a reflection of, you know, where we're going and, and, and the work that goes on behind the scenes to make Ghana sport, you know, better and, and moving forward. Yeah, Tevin, I have two questions for you before we go. One, um, your development as a cricketer, domestic cricket. You play for DCC, Demerara Demar Cricket Club. Uh, can you talk to us about the club and uh, how influential it would have been in developing your game? Yeah, very. Um, you know, I started there. I'm still there at the moment. Um, you know, it, it's a club with rich history. You know, a lot of cricketers, great West Indian players, would have come from the club, and, and there they are players that very that are still very involved in the in the club and the development of the club. So um, that's Roger Harper's you know, club, Richie, right? Roger Harper's yeah, club. Definitely. He's a, yes, he's the president at the moment. Um, yeah, so it's it's just a rich history and the environment that they create. You know, allows for young players to come through and, and develop and, and move forward. Mm -hmm. And 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 quickly. You had missed the first two rounds because you were on international duty, which the Guyanese had lost one and drawn one. But since you took over as captain, you've won five in a row. Can you say what specifically was your impact in getting Guyana back on the winning track? Because, um, as I said, after the first two rounds of the season, uh, Guyana were without a victory and your title defense looked a little shaky. But somehow you took over as captain and you just won five straight and, and the title is now yours. Can you say specifically what your input was in trying to get the team on track to the title defense? Uh, it's, it's tough to say. Um, those first two games we had, um, you know, I started with saying that the team was very inexperienced, especially the batting lineup. And those two games we started with four debutants. Um, it's always going to be difficult when you have four debutants playing their first game and, you know, it's, it's even more inexperienced than what we had. So, um, you know, coming back, it was just me, but it was, was good Kish Moti that brought back some stability to the bowling attack and myself as well with some, some experience. So I think that, that, you know, brought a bit of confidence back to the team. And, you know, we, we did a lot of good things. After, well, the first innings of the West Indies game, it didn't go so well. But the second innings was brilliant. We scored 400 runs, and the team just, you know, we picked up some momentum from that. And, and you know, it was just brilliant to see, you know, players stepping up in different situations. Kim on Savory, um, a brilliant 100 against Jamaica in a situation where, um, and he was he was struggling a bit for runs, and, and he came up and showed character. So it just showed the strength of the team and, and, and individuals coming together to, you know, make this thing work. So I, I won't put it down to me alone or, or, or myself. Or what I did, I think, was just a complete team in virtual. Yeah, you're definitely a, a team man, Tevin Imlak. You spoke about Savers' 100 at Sabina Park. I was rather impressed with your 100 as well against the Jamaica Scorpions because you had to um, retire hurt initially, didn't you? What was the issue? Yeah, OG Shields, man. <laughs> I got a hit on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 the hand just started getting weaker and weaker, so uh, I, it, I was worried about getting out at that stage when you know I could have came back. It, it showed it, it made sense for me to just retire at that point. It was tough because we had just lost the wicket, but you know it, it had to happen, and it, everything happens for a reason. I, I'm a strong believer in that, so you know, it, it worked out in the end. Yeah, there you go, and then you came back and made a fine century, um, which ultimately helped significantly in Guyana Harpy Eagles going on to win the title. We're all the time, Tevin, but one quick one before I go, and maybe it's just me, but has anyone ever told you that you sound a little bit like the former West Indies captain and current limited overs coach, um, Darren Sammy? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's just me, my friend. Congratulations, Tevin. Great job. Guyana Harpy Eagles are champions, and enjoy this one very much. Yeah, thank you. All right. Was it just me? Yes, I it was so. just you. He sounds like <laughs> Kevin. We go to break. Break time. <laughs>